Good morning and welcome to our Palm Sunday service. Warm welcome to all of you this morning and a special warm welcome to those online. Um, before we start this morning we've got uh, our notices. Um, I've been passed a, a message of thanks for those who um, helped clear the garage on at St Andrews on Friday. I know it was much appreciated, especially by those who, was go, who were going to go, go and help on Saturday and didn't have to go, because those who worked on Friday did a, such a great job. So thank you for that. <clears throat> so we've got lots happening this week. Uh, we've got the usual coffee pots in their usual places at their usual times. Uh, then on Wednesday at St Andrews, we've got the uh, coffee, the, the lunch slash service. Uh, that's from 12.30 onwards, while about 3. <clears throat> On Monday, Thursday, there's um, the usual coffee uh, morning at St. Helens. Um, that starts from 10 o'clock, and then that will be followed by a service at 11.30, the team's Monday, uh, Monday, Thursday service. So obviously that's for the team, that's everyone's welcome to, uh, to attend that. Uh, also on Thursday, Thursday evening, uh, here in St. Lawrence's at 7.30, um, it's the Music Jam, um, and I know we're, we're going through some things ready for next Sunday's Easter service, so hopefully we should have some, some exciting uh, things happening in the service next week. Uh, but you just come along, if you, you, know, you don't have to be involved in the, the Sunday service, if you want to come along and... Uh, bring your instrument, bring your voice, just join in some worship on Thursday. That would be great to see you here at 7.30. Then on Friday, Good Friday, it's Messy Church at 3.30 at St Mary's. Um, so if you've got young children, if you know young children, if you're related to young children, uh, then please encourage them to come along, their families to come along. Uh, that's Messy Church Friday at 3.30 at St Mary's. <clears throat> then on Saturday, there is an Easter event uh, run by the people of Catcliffe. Um, that's at the Kiln, but there's also refreshments in St Mary's. There's all kinds of things happening, an Easter egg hunt and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and that's between 12 and 3 next Saturday uh, in Catcliffe. Then next Sunday is Easter Sunday, apparently. Yep, great, great news. Um, so we're going to come here and celebrate the risen Lord here in St. Lawrence's and online, uh, and as usual, that'll be at 10.30. But we really want to encourage you, those, of, those who are watching online this morning, uh, if you're able to come along next Sunday uh, and join with us, uh, we're going to have a real celebration, a real Easter celebration. So be great to see as many here as, as can possibly make it, but we will still be online, so anybody who physically can't make it, um, you will be able to join in with us. And then, finally, on my long list of notices, we've got uh, a week on Tuesday, the 19th, is the Team Council, and that will be meeting online uh, from 7.30. Um, so, obviously, all the... Members of the team council, they should be receiving some uh, minutes and, I'm looking at Linda, some uh, minutes and an agenda. Um, so that's a week on Tuesday, just put in your diary. And I think that's it. But do you know, it's great because <clears throat> I, I know from time to time I've heard people and I've done it myself moaned about where do we put the notices, where do we get the notices out, out of the way, and then, oh, there's so many notices, but isn't it good? Isn't it good that the church is so busy, there's so much happening? I know it's Easter week, but still, there's a lot there. It's good, it's good that the church is doing great things and there's lots happening. So please get involved where you can uh, and support all those, those things this week. Should we stand? So as... Has, uh, it's become a custom, unfortunately, uh, that we start our service um, with needing to pray for the situation in Ukraine. 
Um, I think we we all see the news and we see that it, things are are not particularly getting any better there. So you know, it's even more important that we continue to pray uh, for the nation and the people of that area. So let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Russia. We lift their countries and their leaders before you, the hope of nations. We pray for all those who have the power over life and death, that they will choose for all people life and life in all its fullness. We pray for those who choose war, that they will remember that you direct your people to turn our swords into plowshares and seek for peace. We pray for leaders on the world stage, that they are inspired by the wisdom and courage of Christ. Above all, Lord, today we pray for peace for Ukraine, and we light a candle asking for the light of your love to shine in the present darkness. We ask all this in the name of your blessed Son. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Bring us your peace. Amen. the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high, your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ, what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, thy King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus.
what a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is. The name of Death could not hold you.
God, all the earth, sing the glory of his name, make his praise glorious. It's all right, we've got some words for you to say, but I was a bit ahead of the game. Let's, I'll start that again. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. We say to God, How awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for mankind. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Let's just do that one more time. Praise God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard.
take them out. <laughs> She's going to take them out uh, so they can go and have some fun uh, and learn more about Jesus. Let's, let's pray for them as they go. Father God, we thank you for the young people in this church. We thank you for the blessing that they are to us. May they go now and learn to love and know you more. Amen. to them. Go to the village ahead of you. Our, Bi our Bible reading this Palm Sunday is Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11. Jesus humble and riding on a donkey. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their coats on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, 
This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Good morning, everyone. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to pray that you would open your words to us today, that you would hear the messages that you want us to hear and shut out everything that is not of you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're all very familiar with the story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey that the disciples had obtained for him, the crowds cheering in welcome, and the scribes and the Pharisees complaining about it. We're continuing our series on Amazing Grace, and today we're thinking about humility. Now, I don't know what you think when you hear that word, do you envisage Uriah Heep wringing his hands and telling everybody how very humble he is? Do you see a life of self-denial and forever being at everyone else's beck and call? Jesus came, amongst other things, to show us how to be humble. If you look at how Jesus lived his life, he was humble from the start to the finish. He left the glory of heaven and his place at God's right hand. We have no idea how much that cost him. He was born into poverty, not even in a home, but in an animal shelter. He lived in Nazareth, which was bit of a back-end place, a place nobody had a good word to say about. As far as we know, he's, until he started his ministry, Jesus worked as a carpenter. There are people who dispute whether it was a carpenter, it might even have just been a labourer for another tradesman. He left home and wandered around Israel without a place to call his own. He gathered a crowd of followers who were fishermen, tax collectors, not from the upper echelons of Israel's society. He could pull a crowd, but mostly not from the upper classes. And then he died a criminal's death. I looked up several definitions of what humility is and found several that were quite helpful, but I think this is my favourite one. It's by C.S. Lewis, and it says, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. So let me say that again. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, not doing yourself down, I'm not worthy, but just thinking of yourself less, putting other people first. Jesus obviously did not spend a lot of time thinking about himself and his needs and his comforts. He came to earth to do the will of his Father, and he did that right to the very end. He always had time for the people who needed him, even if he was feeling tired and hungry. He knew how to make others feel important, even if his well-meaning disciples tried to stop them bothering him. So the reading we have today quotes the prophet Zephaniah. 
who says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Some translations say humble rather than lowly or gentle, as it said in our reading. But apparently it wasn't unusual for a king to come into a city riding on a donkey. But when he did, it meant that he came in peace rather than it being a declaration of war. Many thought that the Messiah, when he came, would come to overthrow the Roman rule, that he would be a warrior king. So Jesus was not what they were expecting. And the crowd must have recognised something in him to cheer the way that they did. I always think, to be truly humble, you have to be confident in who you are, secure in your position. If you have to keep proving to yourself and to others that you are worthy of the position you hold by putting other people down, and making sure that they acknowledge your superiority. You're probably feeling a bit of an imposter. You can't imagine Jesus approaching those who are mistreating him and saying, do you know who I am? Not his style. He knew exactly who he was. The son of God, part of the Holy Trinity. And he didn't feel that he had to stress the point. If you're comfortable in your role, you are confident in who you are. And then humility shouldn't be a problem. So, what does humility look like? It means always being prepared to do the lowly job if it's needed, like filling the skip at St Andrews, doing the washing up, cleaning the toilets. It isn't demeaning or below your status. Jesus was prepared to wash his disciples' feet, even though he was their Lord and Master. And they knew it, and he knew it. Peter felt that the job was beneath him, But Jesus corrected him. In Matthew 23, Jesus talked about the scribes and the Pharisees. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honour at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you called to be instructors, for you have one instructor the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So, don't think, never consider yourself better than anyone else. God has created us all equal. No one is any better or any worse than the next one. There are differences, but we're not all the same. But we are equally loved and equally important in the eyes of God. Don't think about yourself too much. But equally, don't concern yourself with what others think about you. In the first place, you're probably guessing about what they think, and you could be wrong. 
And in the second place, what they think matters less than what God thinks. If you're being obedient to him, then you are doing the best thing. Don't, however, forget to take care of yourself. You cannot give out if you are empty. If you remember on the airline demonstrations when they're telling you to put on an oxygen mask in case of emergency, they always say, put your own mask on first and then help other people. Because if you pass out, it's too late for them as well. And then know who you are. You are a child of the heavenly king. Important as it is not to give yourself too much importance, you do need to know how precious to God and how loved you are. And if you are secure in that knowledge, you can do anything that is required of you. We can talk a good talk all we like, but sometimes we just need to get our hands dirty. As the cost of living is rocketing at the moment, the poorest in our society are going to need feeding and help with fuel bills. Not wise words and blessings, The elderly need help with the jobs that they can't manage anymore. James chapter 2 and verse 16 says, If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is that? To be relevant to people both inside and outside the church, We need to understand their greatest needs and to be ready to meet them, no matter how menial those tasks might be. Let's be humble enough to step up and help with those physical needs before we worry about their spiritual ones. As often happens when I was thinking about this serpent, something cropped up in my Twitter feed yesterday um, and it It was from a while ago, but this priest was saying he'd been considering doing a PhD because that's what all the local priests seem to be doing. And somebody said to him, Chardonnay, who lives on the council estate over there, doesn't care if you've got a PhD or not. What she cares is whether you could cook for her kids while she goes to sign on. If we're going to be any help to people at all, we need to be humble enough to meet them at their point of need. I'm going to finish with a verse from a very well-known book of the Bible, the book of Micah. You all know where to find that, don't you? They might have heard this before. (coughs) Chapter 6 and verse 8 says this. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. My last slide doesn't want to play. It's a picture of that verse. So I'll say again. He has shown you O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, you have shown us what it means to be truly humble. We just want to pray that we might learn that lesson, that we would never put ourselves above anyone else, but always be ready to meet those needs. Lord, we just pray that you will show us how to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you all the days of our life. Amen.
Thank you, Julie. Can we just leave that slide up uh, just, just a moment longer? Let's just reflect on that for, for a moment in our own hearts. So he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. We've got a lot to say thank you for. There's a lot of good in this world. I know we watch the news sometimes and we think, why? Why, why does this happen? What, what's happening there? But when we stop and count our blessings, we realize just how fortunate we are and how much we have to thank God for. <coughs> So this morning we're going to do something slightly different. Um, while we continue to worship, we've got a couple more songs. Uh, we want to spend some time worshipping and thanksgiving. Um, so hopefully you should all have uh, a palm leaf this morning uh, and access to a pen. Um, I'm sure if, uh, if anybody hasn't got either and raises their hand, Hopefully somebody will rush to your aid. Um, but yeah, we just want to just want you to write something of thanksgiving on there. So it could just be someone you're thankful for, something you're thankful for, something that you're just so thankful that God has done in your life or that God is currently doing in your life. But we just want to be thankful uh, to give our praises to God this morning. And then during these two songs, um, if you can, at some point, if you can take your palm leaf to the back and someone there will pin it to the uh, artwork, to the road. Um, so we're going to symbolically lay our palm leaves on the road um, as a way of thanksgiving. So we're going to sing a couple of songs now, but feel free at any time during that to uh, write your prayers and, and take them up to the back. Uh, and then you can return to your seat, uh, and then at the end of that worship, we'll, we'll bring them together in prayer. Okay, then. <laughs>
So as we continue to worship, and if you've not already taken your prayers of thanksgiving up, then continue to do so. And I just want to encourage those people watching online, um, if you've got some thanks and be too specific it's too specific if, uh, if you just got something you want to say thank you for just your praises to God just add that in the comments now that'd be great installation with all the palm leaves 
Uh, and Denise is just going to help us bring our prayers together. Thanks, Denise. In your loudest voice, the response is glory in the highest heaven. Let's have a practice. So, as we've laid down our palm leaves, Lord, accept our praises and our thanksgiving. May they worthily magnify your holy name. Be lifted up and exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna to the Son of David. Glory in the highest heaven. Today we are happy to join the crowds in celebration. But help us to walk with you through this holy week into the temple courts, into the upper room, into the garden of Gethsemane, to Pilate, to Herod, to the place of the skull, to the foot of the cross. For the stare at within is the gift of faith. We don't only praise you with our lips, that follow Jesus in the way of the cross every day of our life. Hosanna to the Son of David. Glory to the King of Kings. Hosanna to the Son of David. Glory to the King of Kings. Amen. We're facing that way, and um, we're going to uh, close our online service. So, prayer, and then we're going to bless one another. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself, taking the form of a servant, and in obedience died on the cross for us. Give us the courage to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we're going to try something a little bit different. Um, we're going to say the words of uh, to one another. But in church, we're going to say it. Try this one. So in church, we're going to say the grace to the people online, and hopefully the people online are going to say the grace back to us. We won't hear what they're saying, but hopefully they will hear what we're saying. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.